Good evening, students. I think the question is visible to you. A bridge cable is suspended from about uh, 80 meters apart and it carries a UDL of 45 kilometers per meter. Saira, any doubt? Here, uh, if the maximum sag, sag is nothing but dip, 8 meters, calculate the maximum tension in the cable. If the cable is supported by saddles, which are stayed by wires inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal, if the same inclination of backstay passes over pulley, determine the forces acting on the towers. If the same inclination of the stay passes over pulley, determine the forces on towers. So the statement, uh, last statement is it is repeated. This distance is 80 meters. And now support A, support B. The maximum sag is nothing but this is the sag, which is 8 meters. And now here they are asking you to calculate what is the maximum tension in the cable. Maximum tension in the cable. So here this is the tension. This is horizontal force H. This is vertical force VA. And this is vertical force VB, horizontal force H and a tension force T is there. Now you can observe here a UDL is acting this UDL is 45 kilo Newton per meter that is given in the question. So we know that the reaction force VA plus VB is equal to 45 into 80 or VA is equal to WL by 2. So 45 into 80 by 2. Tell me the value. Sir, 1800. How much? 1800. Sir, 1, 800. 1800 kilonewtons. Now, VB is also. 1800 kilonewtons. Whereas here horizontal thrust H or horizontal force H is nothing but W L squared by 8 into D. W is 45 into 80 squared by 8 into H. So 4500. So this value is 4,500 kilonewtons. I think everyone is able to follow the class. It's not one or two persons giving the responses. You need not shout, but at least type in the chat box so that I can see that you people are following. Now, maximum tension in the cable is to be calculated, which is nothing but T max is square root of VA square plus H square. So square root of 1800 square plus 4500 square under root. 4846.64. Yes. So 4846.64 kilonewtons is T max. The maximum, yes. Calculate the maximum tension in the cable. Yes, we got it. If the cable is supported by saddles, which are stayed by the forces, which are stayed by wires, inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal. So the first point is, if the cable is supported by saddles, if the cable, so, if 
the cable is supported by saddles so here this is the tower just we have said that there are two types of supporting systems are there in the one is pulley frictionless pulley or frictionless roller second one is saddles so here this is saddle for this supporting tower here the saddle looks like this here the tower cable is connected like this and this force here it is tension force T yeah we call it as TS why because TS is tension force in suspension cable whereas this is called as backstay backstay is nothing but the supporting one or anchor cable so we call it as TA and it is given in the question just go to the question and see once again it is said that inclination at 30 degrees to the horizontal so this is making an angle of 30 degrees now for the saddles to be in equilibrium whatever the horizontal force is there this horizontal force should be equal to this horizontal force so what is this value here ta what is this one sir cos 30 ta cos 30 why because you are resolving along horizontal axis adjacent to this ta cos 30 whereas if this angle is to be calculated here so to get the angle of this what i will do is nothing but so here i want the angle with respect to horizontal if this is something like alpha tan yes, alpha yes sir alpha would be 30 and it's here sir if the cable is supported by saddles which has stayed at uh, now see if the cable is supported by saddles which are stayed by wires inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal it means that stayed by wires so the opposite one this is 30 degrees is given not this one okay sir so see uh, if you observe this diagram from this diagram your cable is ending here suspension cable is ending here when it is a saddle system so here another cable is supported here like this this cable we call it as either back stay or anchor cable Corresponding to this, this angle is mentioned as 30 degrees. So now, here we require what is the angle that is made. So just see if this is alpha. This is also alpha. So alpha is nothing but tan alpha is B A by H. So just write down here itself. Tan alpha is equal to B A by H. VA is 1800 by H is 4500. So alpha is what is the value of alpha? 21.8. 21.8, right. 21.8 degrees. Now this is nothing but TS cos 21.8. For saddles system, horizontal shear is zero. That means TS cos twenty one point eight minus TA cos thirty is equal to zero. To keep it in equilibrium, these two forces should be in equal. If they are equal, that is TA cos 30 is equal to TS cos 21.8, then the saddle system, it won't move. Otherwise, the saddles, it will move. So from this, TS is known, which is TS is 4846. 0.64 cos 21.8 minus TA cos 30 is equal to zero in this model of TA. 
What is the value of T A? Sir, five one nine six point one nine four. Five one nine six point one five. Good. Five one nine six point one five kilo newtons. So the tension in the back stay is calculated. The tension in back stay is calculated. Now see the saddle forces when they are giving a tension force. Sorry, when these cables are giving a tension force, they are inducing downward force on the tower, supporting tower. So vertical force coming on the tower is to be calculated. So vertical force. Coming on tower is equal to now this vertical force. I am not considering the sign here. What is the downward force? This is a downward force acting in the downward direction, which is T A cos 30 is this one, and this is T A sin 30, and this is also T S sin 21.8. So this is T A sin 30 plus T S sin 21.8. So which is acting in the downward direction. So T A is 5196.15 into sin 30 plus T S 4846.64 sin 21.8. So you will get the vertical force coming on the tower. 6299.92 sir. Sairam has given a different value 4397. What is for, for, for what you have done this? 4397.96. 4397.96 sir. 4397.96 kilonewtons. Remaining people, those who have done 4397.96. Alex, can you just check it once? Rajkumar, 126. Yes, sir. Okay, are you following? Yes, sir. Good, okay. Right. So, what is the force coming on the tower is calibrated. Now, we need to go with the if the cable is supported by pulley, if the cable is if the cable is supported by pulley, pulley means here the tension force will be the same. Sub, that is the supporting system is different here. So this is your pulley. For this pulley here, the tower is there like this. So the tension force T S is four eight four six point six four kilonewtons, and it is making an angle of twenty one point eight degrees. Whereas it is given that this is thirty degrees only with the same inclination. Now just understand here what is happening. What is the difference between this saddle as well as this pulley is this is a frictionless pulley and here the same rope it is considered as backstay. So whatever the tension force here this is there the same tension force will be there here. So this is TS only. So the TA will become TS. Tension in backstay is equal to Tension in suspension cable horizontal shear is equal to in the previous case horizontal shear is zero but here the horizontal shear need not be zero here what happens this term is TS cos 21.8 this one is Ts cos 30. So Ts cos 21.8 minus Ts cos 30. Ts is 
4846.64 into cos 21.8 minus cos 30. What is the value? Yeah, Umesh, what is the value? Chest power chain. So three not two point seven two. Yes. Nice. Okay, good. Yes. So horizontal shear is three not two point seven two kilonewtons, whereas you want vertical force coming on the tower so vertical force is ts sin 30 and this is also ts sin 21.8 so vertical force just for the horizontal shear what is the direction of this one this is the direction vertical loads coming on supporting tower is equal to Ts sin 30 plus Ts sin 21.8 so Ts is 4846.64 into sin 30 plus sin 21.8 Four double two three point two one. Four double two three point two. Okay. Right. Yes. Good. I have seen only eight or nine numbers. They are actually out of thirty four. So if you people are active, that it means that I can see number of problems according to their interest. Right. So you got the understanding here. The type of problems will be obtained regarding one is calculating the maximum tension. And the next one is from this maximum tension, what is the force, vertical force that is coming on the supporting tower? If it is on a saddle or if the supporting system is on a pulley. So these are the problems that may come in the examination. And here, length of the cable, they may ask you the problems that may, that may occur is length of the cable. So length of the cable is nothing but L plus 8. Eight by three into d squared by l. If this is a parabolic one, this is applicable when the shape of the cable is parabola. So here, till now, what we have seen is we have seen only the cable profile now we have to understand what is the difference between unstiffening girder as well as stiffening girder here the types of suspension bridges are unstiffened suspension bridges stiffened suspension bridges braced three hinged arches we will see the difference one by one unstiffened suspension bridges are used to carry light loads in this type of bridge, the load is carried by a flexible platform or roadway. Here, whatever the bridge I have shown you for Laknavalam Lake, where the walkway is provided, walkway is provided where the deck slab is not stiffened. So this is the example of unstiffened suspension bridge.
the bridge deck is stiffened by the use of stiffening cutters by the use of stiffening cutters these gutters may be these gutters may be in one span from pier to pier these gutters may be in one span from pier to pier to hinged or three hinged The two hinged stiffening gutter. So, in the two hinged stiffening gutter, the hinges are provided. at the supports as well as at the center okay the hinges are provided at the supports okay please do write why people only at the supports at the supports that in the two hinged stiffening gutter the hinges are provided at the supports. It is a redundant structure. It is a redundant structure while Three hinged stiffening gutter stiffening gutter has hinges at supports and center. It is similar to an arch where the deck slab is having a hinge at the supports as well as at the center this is a statically determined structure So why we are going to stiffening uh, suspension bridges rather than unstiffened? So why we are going to stiffen is nothing but in unstiffened suspension bridges, they are having uh, due to the application of loading, there is a change in the shape of the bridge. But the alteration in the shape, shape of the bridge, it is causing a lot of deformations and oscillations. Now see. I will just open once again the suspe unstiffened suspension bridge. So here, this is not stiffened. So due to the application of the loading, there is a deformation in the deck. It is not stiffened, but 
for lighter weights it is okay whereas going to the heavier weights there is a change in the shape and it causes a lot of oscillations as well as deformations that's why we need to go for stiffened girder bridges for heavy loads stiffened girder bridges are required for heavy loads so just write down a simple suspension cable out on the next point a simple suspension cable a simple suspension cable would be able to carry safely light loads would be able to carry safely light loads this is not suitable for heavy moving loads when heavy move when heavy loads move across the span it causes continuous alteration in the shape of the cable this affects this affects in large deformations and oscillations it is necessary to retain its shape under any loading under any kind of loading this can only be achieved by providing stiffening gutters this can only be achieved by providing stiffening gutters now in our topic we are now checking Three hinged stiffening girder suspension bridge. Three hinged stiffening girder suspension bridge. So here we understand that in this three hinged stiffening girder bridge, the three hinges will be provided two at the supports, one at the center. And it is a determinate structure. Statically, it is a determinate structure. So, not the right. The diagram of this looks like this. this is not on the diagram. This is the text lab. This deck lamp, the supports are provided here. This is a hinge, 
and your tower supporting tower okay your uh, support that is the tech slab is resting at this support and here also it is supporting here so here i am calling it as point p this is point q now the hinges are provided here three hinges two at the supports one at the center so a cable is suspended here like this So these are the suspenders. These are the suspenders. Now here your support is there here. Your cable, it is having a supporting system. Now the girder is subjected to applied external loads. The girder is subjected to now external loading and upward uniformly distributed load by right down. The girder is subjected to Applied external loads and upward UDL WE per meter. Now we understand here what is happening. This is up to now you have analyzed your cable. What is the tension force in the cable that you have seen? Now this is decking. If you observe this is your cable, this cable is being subjected to a UDL of WE per meter length is acting here. This entire UDL will be resisted here by this decking only like this. That's why we have written that the gutter is subjected to applied external loads. External loads are nothing but due to movement of the vehicles and upward UDL WE per meter length. Now, this cable is there. It is having a horizontal H as well as tension T here and a vertical force V is there. Tension T is the that is there in the cable. Now this cable will be having a dip H or you can consider it as D. We consider dip as D. Okay. Now, if you consider the loading on this, this is your three hinged gutter, whatever the decking I am calling, this is the gutter and this gutter is three hinged, one, two, three, it is three hinged. Now, the analysis is done separately for the cable as well as for the deck and they are superimposed and they are superimposed. So write down. The bending moment, if I want the bending moment at any section, the bending moment at any section, so actual bending moment at any section is equal to actual bending moment at any section is equal to beam moment minus moment due to H. 
so this is beam moment this beam moment minus the moment due to h so that is nothing but mx is nothing but mb so just write down this one this is i will explain to you while we are solving a problem b moment mb minus moment due to h moment due to h is nothing but moment due to h is nothing but so here mx the actual bending moment at any section is nothing but mx is equal to b moment minus here if our udl is there if this is addition of x this distance is considered as l minus x so just keep it like that only don't know what to write on this one you keep it as actual bending moment in any section is equal to b moment minus moment due to h whereas shear force at any section shear force at any section is equal to beam shear minus h tan theta So just while solving the problem, we will understand these things. Uh, note on the problem. I will do one thing. The problem I will explain to you tomorrow. Uh, while explaining the uh, problem tomorrow, I will tell you how to calculate this beam shear and how we are getting this h tan theta.